In this video, Cam Roberts talks about striping and how it was when he first got started, how and when he went full time in his business, and if you stick around until the end of the video, Cam's going to tell us about how to generate more revenue in your company in the shortest amount of time. But if you're interested in learning more about striping, how to get customers, marketing packs, and much, much more, be sure to check out the How to Stripe course. It will be the first link in the pinned comment section and the description. Also, we're doing a $500 stencil kit giveaway with same day stencils. And if you want to enter into this giveaway, all you've got to do is be a premium, platinum, or ultimate subscriber of Quote IQ. Using the link below will enter you into the giveaway. And right now, it's only $1 to make the switch, and the winner will be announced when the contest ends on May 1st. And if not, then enjoy the video. So, Cam, tell me about how it was when you first got started. Getting started, that was a wild ride. Um... I got started in 2018, so I was working full-time job. I was in the glass industry, uh, a lot of commercial automatic doors and stuff. And then I was off work for five weeks. I had an injury in February um, and I got super bored while I was off work. So I decided to buy a striping machine. The reason why I bought a striping machine, even though I knew nothing about striping, was, uh, it was about six years prior to that, so 2012. I was in the maintenance department at a shopping mall and in the town I lived in, there was one guy, literally one guy who striped parking lots. And we tried to hire this guy once and uh, the work itself was fine, but the guy was very, very difficult to deal with. And my boss just ripped his arrow at the time. He's like, I'm never hiring this guy again. In fact, we started hiring a company from two hours away to come work for us. So I, ever since then I had the idea. And so when I was off work board in 2018, re uh, recovering, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy one of them striping machines. So bought the machine, got started part-time in 2018. And I was just doing jobs after hours, evenings and weekends, really didn't know what I was doing. So I went really slow. Um, Dan Zercher's book helped me tremendously because I didn't even know how to start the machine. Um, just doing simple restripes. And then what really set it off was I got in with the pavers that year. Um, they were sick of hiring that same guy. They just a pain in the butt to deal with. So I started doing some small layout jobs for them. Actually, funny story, the first new layout I ever did was a hotel. I noticed they were paving and I literally just walked in there coming home from my day job one day and I was like, um, this is me, I'm new. Like, you know, didn't say I don't know what I'm doing, but I said, you know, I'm very brand new, but I would love an opportunity. Do you have this already arranged, your, your, your line striping? And she's like, yeah, it's all under the contract. Like, don't worry about it. Uh, it was two weeks later, I got a phone call from the same hotel manager and she's like, something happened, uh, how fast can you come? So I was like, oh man, like I didn't even know how to do a new layout. So that 200 stall new layout took me literally three nights. Like I just going so slow, you know, picking at it after hours, working around weather. Um, but that's how I cut my teeth, man. It was, yeah, just pounding, pounding pavement, knocking doors. And that led to me basically, by the time I got in with the pavers in 2018, it was the next spring, cause you know, we have a long winter in Canada. By the time I got to February, I had enough work booked where I was like, I think I should quit my job. Because otherwise, I don't want to work 80 hours a week. That's the way it was trending. So I quit my day job and uh, started striping full time. How long were you working your day job and striping for? Yeah, so it, it, our striping season in Canada is basically like mid-April to Halloween, uh, early November. So that first year in 2018 was just part time. Uh, you know, I was working Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 4.00. 30 to five sometimes and then i'd come home stripe in the evenings and weekends when i could um so i quit my job in in i think i officially put in my notice march the first and i was like i'm leaving in a month i'm doing this striping thing full time which was a little bit stupid like it worked out for me like i, I had a feeling in my gut but uh, when i let when i pen in my notice in march 2019 like i was not a business guy i had no business plan uh, I didn't know like my projected costs. I didn't know any of that. I just knew in my gut I was gonna make this work. So April 1st, I became a uh, self-employed guy. April 1st, 2019. Um, and as the story goes, I haven't looked back since. Uh, basically striped as much as I could that first year. Did a little bit of odds and ends over the winter. And ever since then, it's been striping in the summer. And then we got into snow removal in uh, COVID year, 2020. When you started and you were just making that transition from your full-time job to working for yourself. What was that like? Was it a scary process? Was your family scared? How did your wife react? Things like that. I truly believe the only reason I even did it was because of my wife. Now, she also acknowledged it was a little bit crazy for me to give up the job I had. It was a decent paying job. And, and truthfully, when I went to work at that glass company, um, I was gonna work there forever, man. That was my forever home. Family company, I loved them to death. 
Um, but she, she was my support. And I, I told her like, you know, we had a lot of conversations leading up to April 1st, 2019, where I said, look, like I worked a lot in 2018, so much so, and I don't want to get into the full details now, but like I had a break at the end of 2018 mentally, I snapped, like I was way overworked, way overtired. Uh, and I basically told her like, I can throttle back the striping because now that, now that my name's out there, you know, more people are calling, farther jobs farther away, two, three hours. I told her like, I could throttle that back and just work like one evening a week or one weekend a month or whatever. But I told her like, I think I can make this work. And worst case scenario, this is what really sealed it. Um, she made the point, she's like, man, if you quit your job and it doesn't work out, I'll bet you the same glass company would hire you back. <laughs> like if I made it four months down the road and I was like, oh dang, I made a huge mistake. I could always go back there, get back working. So that was kind of like, you know, a, a fallback plan B, which um, I think is a good idea. If you're, if you're thinking of, you know, quitting your day job and taking your stripe and business full time, like ask yourself what the worst case scenario is. Cause usually the worst case scenario isn't that bad. Um, you know, there's usually lots of, especially now in 2024, there's a lot of employment opportunities available in Canada and the U S. So even if you quit and you're striping for whatever reason, it doesn't work out the way you want it to, you can find something else to cover your butt. You won't go starving. Um, that being said, when you go, what I found was going part time, like 10, 15 hours a week to 40 to 50 hours a week in the business, massive change in because you get way more opportunities because you have the time to invest into finding those revenue generating opportunities. So it's not like, you know, if you work 20 hours a week in your striping business now and you double that to 40, I always tell people, chances are you're not going to double your revenue. You're going to go a lot more in your revenue because of the time that you could put into finding the bigger opportunities. So what was it like when you hired the first person to come and work for you? Do they still work for you now? I wish that, oh, I love that guy. He was 18. No, he moved, he moved out uh, to Eastern Canada. So um, we actually had another one of his family members working with us for a while too. Uh, the first employee I hired uh, straight up, I agonized over it. I, I'm a very like, I'm a people driven person. And I felt like the first person I was going to hire, like I'm going to have to like provide this person's livelihood for the rest of time. And I, I hyped up my first employee to a really big thing. Um, but what I found is as soon as I did it, I re instantly regretted not hiring somebody earlier because at any moment, I know this now, at any moment, there is somebody out there who was, would be willing to work one job a week with you or, or two nights a week. You know, not everyone needs 40 hours a week. And, and if you can't provide the 40 hours, they're not going to hate you. Like if you set a good expectation, it'll work out. So my first employee, he was uh, still in high school or recently graduated. Um, he did, he was living at home. He didn't need to work 40 hours a week. Uh, we definitely had some longer days and, and you know, he learned a lot very quickly. Um, but yeah, I, I delayed hiring my first employee and I really, really uh, regret that. Had I done that sooner, probably would have worked out a lot better. The other employee that I hired right around the same time was uh, part-time. So this is uh, somebody that I knew when, when she was a kid. Uh, and she, when she was older, she was looking for some extra work. So she actually worked remotely five hours away from my tiny striping company, just doing like social media posting, graphic design work. She basically worked two afternoons a week. I would help her out on Zoom. And uh, man, that, that was super helpful too. So same thing, you know, some people out there are totally game to just work one or two days a week and a few afternoons a week. Find those people and they will really help you grow. So we know now, obviously we see your media on Instagram, on YouTube, know that you've blown up significantly. You're an inspiration to all of us. Uh, we really appreciate learning from you and the social platforms that you provide. Yeah, I love connecting with people like, you know, I'm, I'm, I love being busy, like I'm a busy guy, but that doesn't mean I don't make time. I love giving people my calendar link for a 15 minute call. I love connecting with people. And if I can help anyone out in even a small way, that'd be awesome. Um, I love what the, I love what the industry is going. Um, so if I can just play a small part in helping some new guys out, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Ken, well, we appreciate it. Thanks for coming on the channel. I appreciate you.